In this lecture, we learned about the relation between macroscopic and microscopic energies. For macroscopic, everyday objects, we've been using thermal and bond energy to describe their internal energies. If we zoom in to the atomic level, we see that these energies are really just the kinetic and potential energies of atoms. When we add up all the kinetic and potential energies of the atoms, we get the same total energy as we get from adding the thermal and bond energies. If we look at a diatomic molecule with just one bond between two atoms, it is easy to see how changing the total energy changes the kinetic and potential energies. When the total energy is negative, then the atoms are bound together. There isn't enough kinetic energy to escape from the region of where the potential energy is large and negative. As we add energy to the molecule, the total energy rises, and both the average kinetic and potential energies rise. If the total energy is still negative, then the atoms are still bound, but with more kinetic energy, they can move farther apart, where the potential energy is higher. If we add enough energy so that the total energy becomes positive, then there's enough kinetic energy for the atoms to get infinitely far apart. So we've broken the bond. In the macroscopic picture, we would say that we've raised the bond energy. As we add even more energy, we see that the kinetic energy of the atoms gets even larger when they are far apart. Here's another example of a diatomic molecule. The total energy is large enough that the atoms are oscillating back and forth, sort of like a mass on a spring but the total energy is negative, so the atoms are bound together. Since the potential energy curve is steeper at small distances, the force is stronger there, the atoms are accelerating more, and the kinetic energy changes more rapidly. If we raise the total energy enough to break the bond, then the kinetic energy is large enough for the atoms to keep moving apart. 